turned on. Oh, that's okay. And let me turn on unlist live play when it's done and stream elements. I forgot all kinds of stuff. I got so obsessed with uh, trying the 30 frames per second to see if that makes the quality any better. And I forgot to do all of the normal stuff that I usually do when I set up a stream. Hey, John, what's going on, man? Hey, Nate, how are you guys doing today? It's a Stadia cast solo. I'm using the same scene just to, so this should work. It did. All right. There we go. How's everyone doing today? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to talk about tomorrow. Definitely a lot of stuff to talk And I just realized I don't have anything. Do I have water in here? Not much. Let me fill my water real quick. Oh man, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what? I should always do a stream on Saturday to help you guys, <laughs> so you guys can help me build the show notes for tomorrow. So hello to John and Nate and Eric and Neil and Regor and Forex and uh, another John. I hope you guys are having a great day. I'm doing things a little bit differently today. And um, so let me know if uh, anything looks weird. I'm streaming this on... 30 frames per second instead of 60 frames per second. And for the most part, you guys probably shouldn't really notice that much of a difference. However, the reasoning behind it is that I figure if I'm streaming at the same bit rate, but a lower frames per second, then each frame should look better than if I am using the same bit rate, but more frames. And so if it looks better or if it looks worse or whatever, I'm not sure. I figured uh, 30 frames per second would be okay since I'm not moving around a whole bunch. Of course, I do, I do have, uh, you know, stuff going on in the background here. Regor says, I think it looks worse. Interesting. <laughs> Consigno, I just look more bald. Well, that's because I shaved. Although I'm not sure how I feel about that. I haven't decided what I'm going to do as far as shaving. Um, real quick, I, I have a whole bunch of people to thank. A whole bunch of people. Because I haven't, I haven't done a live stream... Um, probably since Sunday and, um, like three days ago we had, no, okay, no, start, starting right here. So here, let me just mark these. We had a whole bunch of people become members yesterday and I'm not sure why. I don't even think that we put out a video. But I want to thank those people, so let's let's do that real quick. Uh, we've got Jonathan Botherton, thank you. Uh, Stadia Rocket Raccoon, Mark Miller, Roosevelt Phillips, Peter Blake, Valentine Valentine Garcia, uh, Alex the Nerd Gamer, Jay Dangle, uh, Cone, Ian, Kyle Lambing, Brian Fer Fernald. Uh, thank all of you. For becoming members. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I got my... 
got my uh, free Premiere Edition yesterday. My wife signed up, got the email that said you should get an email within an hour or so, and then you can, like, because you supposedly could do it for multiple people in your family. Uh, but she never got the second email that, that actually gave you the thing to buy it. Might be why I got a whole bunch of members. Oh, that's possible. Um, Neil, did I, have I played Miles Morales yet? No, I don't have a um, I don't have a PS5. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Richard. It's kind of a weird way that they went about it, you know. You sign up, you get an email, and then you get another email. It's a really weird way to do it. It's on PS4 as well. I don't know. I I didn't play the first Spider Man, and I know it's supposed to be really good. I just, I just never did. Oh uh, well, I mean, I guess they ran out of stock, so uh, my wife was unable to. She never got the second email. Yeah, I've been watching. Not, not necessarily watching, but I've seen some stuff on, um, like on Twitter, like people capturing stuff and putting it on Twitter. And, uh, it does look really good. Like just the way that, that, uh, Spider-Man moves is awesome. But I'm definitely interested in the game, but I'm not going to run out and get it. I've got so much to play right now. Sammy, I had a question on one of my videos that raises an interesting point. Is Stadia Next Gen compared to PS5 and Xbox Series X? I don't know, man. Um, I think it's more current, well, last gen? Because now we're now we're in current gen. The PS5 and the Xbox Series are both out now, so that is current gen. And I think uh, PS4, um, Xbox One and Stadia, those are last gen. And, but the thing about Stadia is that like they can upgrade the servers at any time and then we're caught up or maybe even leapfrogging them. You got uh, stuck into uh, Tom Clancy's Operation Breakpoint. I didn't like that one, man. I didn't like that one at all. I like uh, Division 2. I've been playing, I've been, um, I got the New York expansion and I've been playing that a little bit. I've been playing that a little bit and I've been playing Assassin's Creed um, Valhalla, which is really good, but I feel like after playing uh, Sekir Sekiro, and then going to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the combat feels really, I don't know, fluffy? Like, it's just not impactful. Um, I don't know, it just doesn't feel as good. It almost makes me wish that I haven't played uh, Sekiro, because the combat in that is so fantastic. Um, what do I have running on the background exactly? So this is a, res a retro pie hooked up to an old four x three monitor. And um, it's basically in attract mode. So it, it goes through and it picks a random game, shows you some game footage from it. Uh, I think it's like 30 seconds and then switches to another game at random. You find, well, it's my first Assassin's Creed game, so I didn't know that. Um, I will say, um, when I'm playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and I'll talk about this more tomorrow, but when I'm playing that game, like, sometimes I wish that there weren't, like, I want to be all super sneaky and do stuff, but then I have to go to, like, a, a town 
and raid it with like a war party and like all of the sneaky stealthy stuff just isn't as fun when the rest of my uh the rest of my war party or whatever are with me so i almost wish that i could just go in there on my own um kill a few dudes you, you know what i mean i think that that would be more fun i don't like it when you when you raid other towns Uh, John, have I tried Sniper Elite? Did not expect to love that game as much as I do. I have not tried it yet. Um, but I've been playing um, Sekiro a little bit. Actually, I don't think I played Sekiro this week. I've been playing Assassin's Creed and what was the other game that I mentioned. There's another game that I that I just mentioned, like I don't know, five minutes ago. I can't remember. Um, Ganson Productions, any thoughts on how Stadia got the 31st frames per second version of Assassin's Creed and Luna got 60? Well, that's simple. Luna's using Windows servers. Um, Valhalla is using Linux, and that means that it's harder for the uh, publishers to you know, convert that game over. I've said this a million times. And this is not directed at you, Ganson. I've, I'm, I'm just saying that I've said this a million times. Every single game that is on Stadia right now, every single game is a port. It was not a game that was made with The Division. Thank you, Richard. It is not a game that was made with Stadia in mind. They are doing all of this after the fact. Now, the Luna... Um, that's just running Windows servers, so that's not a port. Like, it was made with that in mind. Not Luna, per se, but, you know, on Windows. It was made with PC in mind. And so, the developers don't have to do nearly as much work to port stuff. Now, right now, is that a hindrance? Absolutely. Right now, is that a stumbling block? Yes. But in a couple of years, that won't be an issue anymore. Uh, have I signed up for Luna? Yeah, I, I did sign up for Luna. Uh, Bradley, I think my ISP is throttling my internet when I'm playing Stadia. Is there any way to investigate that? Um, yeah, try using a VPN and see if that changes anything. And if it does, then you'll have your answer, I think. I mean, for me, Luna is completely uninteresting for, for one reason alone. Because you can't buy games. You have to subscribe. And I'm not really interested in being in having to subscribe. I would much rather go come on in. Okay. Um I'm just not interested in having to subscribe. I would prefer to just be able to buy a game if I want and play that game. Now, we don't know what Luna's business practices will end up being, so maybe that's going to change. One second, I gotta talk to my son. I'm back. Um, did you all hear about Ubisoft Montreal? Yeah, you know what? I We don't know what really happened. So I prefer not to speculate about what happened at Ubisoft yesterday. So let's just ignore it for now. Um, owned TV. What camera do I use? This is a Sony A6000. If you want to know anything about the setup that I have, go to um, type exclamation point gear in chat and a link will show up that will take you to a list of all of the stuff that I use uh, because it's more than just the camera. 
Um, this is a Sony a6000, but then you also have to have a good lens. All right. Um, Jacob Dickens, two to three realistic things to expect for Stadia's birthday. Um, okay, realistic things. Number one. It's a good question. Um, realistic things to expect for Stadia's birthday. This is really tough. I'm not sure. All right, how about this? Oh man, you know, if if it were me, if I were in charge of um, of Stadia, the, the the number one thing that I would do is I would put a whole bunch of stuff on sale. I would say, hey everybody, we've got these really really great sales, um, so like fifty percent off this, fifty percent off that, and if you're a pro member, then sixty percent off, and uh, that would. That would be awesome because that would bring a lot of people in who otherwise might not get a game. Uh, I think that that would be good. So sales would be number one. Uh, number two, I I would not have I would not have put out messaging, and I would not have put out um, family sharing. I would have saved that for the birthday. Like it seems so weird for them to just say. Here's this cool feature everybody's been asking for uh, two weeks before the anniversary of the release. Uh, here's this other cool feature that, that everybody's been asking for messaging. I would have held on to those things for the birthday. So part of me says that they won't do anything, <clears throat> excuse me, for the birthday. They won't even mention it. And why wouldn't they mention it? I don't know. You think that they would have held on to kept that stuff in their pocket until that day. Um, Dave Winall, a bunch of games, both pro and non-pro. Maybe, maybe all those Ubisoft games that are supposed to be coming to Stadia, maybe those will get a release. Um, maybe Crowdplay will finally be out, but that, that, that I mean, as cool as that is, that doesn't appeal to a vast majority of gamers. That appeals to a very small subset of gamers. It's cool, and I want it, but it's not super compelling to most people. Most people just don't care. Most people don't care about the YouTube streaming either. So, I like, it, it, for me, it would need to be something that would be very appealing to a wide group of people. So that says sales, some pro games maybe, uh, but I think that it's possible for this, the, the 19th, yeah, the 19th to come and go without Stadia saying anything. Yeah. I, I mean, I saw that Sammy. I, I don't think that that's like cool, I guess. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not interested in playing human fall flat and even if I was like, there's a, there's a bunch of founders and having everybody trying to compete to get in that game together at the same time with Chris and Grace. That's just, I mean, most people are going to be left out. Um, so I don't, I don't know. That's a good question, Jacob. Thank you very much for the super chat though. I appreciate it. What is replacing Destiny 2? It's leaving Pro on the 19th. I don't I don't think anything is replacing it. Um, they gave us what they said that they were going to give us. Uh, we got all of the DLC, not the expansions, but all of the DLC um, with Destiny 2 with Pro for a year. That's a really good deal. And you still have all of that stuff too. Unless you cancel Pro. Destiny base game is not leaving. I, th I think it is. I could be wrong though. And remember, 
just because something there's a little fuzz on my microphone thing um just because something is leaving pro doesn't mean that we still can't play it there's a lot of games that have left pro but we still have dancing panda oh did someone pee in your cheerios go troll somebody else man Mr. Urban World, I keep hearing everyone talk about Family Feud. Yeah, I don't... I mean... I haven't... I haven't looked at that game. So I, I don't... I personally don't really know what the appeal would be. Like, because... Do you have to spell things? Or can you just say? Like... Um, you know, we interviewed people in a mall. A hundred people... This is, you know, what do you eat for breakfast? And, you know, do I have to type in eggs on the controller? I'm not sure how it works. See, now, Consino, I feel like you're falling into the exact same trap that everybody else does. Is when, when Google says, all right, we're, you know, well, first off, Google has not announced anything at all about the anniversary like they haven't talked about it they haven't talked about a connect or anything now is it possible that that's because um because they don't have anything yeah is it possible that it's because they learned their lesson but from doing stuff in the past and uh they're like you know what we just won't say anything until the day of that's possible too. Uh, maybe they'll announce something on Monday. Hey, everybody, tune in on this day. Whatever. Um, but let's let's assume that they're going to do something. Even and, and this is just for this argument. Let's assume that they're going to do something. Like Consigno said, maybe they just got rid of all that stuff so to to declutter the announcements that they're going to have. That's us projecting what we want onto them. And what happens when you do that is you set people up for disappointment. And I'm not, I'm not saying you're doing it, Consigno. I'm saying that a lot of people do it. Uh, Jay Smith says, congrats on the anniversary of the podcast. Actually, the podcast started um, as soon as it was announced at GDC. So, like, we were doing the show before Stadia came out. But thank you. RJC is 100% uh, correct. Uh, developers have yet to build games that take advantage of, of being in the cloud yet. Richard says, I'm always disappointed when I look in the mirror. Man, me too. I've been putting on weight. I've not been taking care of myself. Um, that's why I cut uh, Switchcraft down to two days a week instead of uh, three days a week. Which, by the way... If you guys don't know, I have other podcasts. And if you go to runjumpstomp.com slash shows, you can subscribe to all of them. And that would be awesome for me. So if you guys could do that, that would be great. Family Feud has a predictive text function. It's surprisingly accurate. Well, that's good. Uh, Christian wants to know, am I going to have another John Justice interview anytime soon? I have no idea. Um, we were in talks to get an, a, a third interview with, with um, superhero John Justice. And um, he ended up having to back out of it when COVID hit. And we just... Basically, uh, his scheduler said, yeah, we're not going to be doing any interviews anytime soon. It's going to be a long time because of COVID. And I, like, I don't want to bug them. So, but, you know, some, you know, there's people from Google who watch the show. And so, you know, if you guys want to be on the show and talk about what's going on behind the scenes, we would always love to have you.
Darren Polk says, I wonder how much weight people are gaining and medical issues like heart disease due to working from home all the time. I'm not even working from home, but when I go to work, I'm sitting all the time because I'm grading papers like nonstop and like I'm spending too much time sitting. Jacob Dickens found out today that the Series X and PS5 controllers works with Stadia. I wonder about the haptics. Um, well, it first off, that's not a huge surprise that those controllers work with Stadia. However, um, like if, if the games are not designed to take advantage of those specific haptics that are in the PS5 controller, I don't think that we'll have anything that... Um, we won't have any kind of... What's the word I'm looking for? You're not going to get any benefit from having that controller on Stadia. Wow, look at that lag on that. Like, that took forever for me for that um, to come up after I hit the button. RJC says, Bill, ask Lloyd to test the Xbox controller with Stadia. That's not a bad idea. Remind me tomorrow when we're doing the Sunday show. Sofa Spy, it's being rolled out slowly. If you switch over to the Italian language, you can use it. And I'm not sure why they would do it that way, other than to just limit the functionality to make sure it works the way that they want. But it, it is working. Like, I tested it yesterday, and I was like, oh, cool, yep. I mean, it's in Italian, so I don't know what to push, but it was there. Stadia messaging has quick replies and instant translations. That's awesome. That is awesome. But yeah, I'm not I'm not anticipating that um it will see any benefit from plugging a PS5 controller into it. Same thing why we wouldn't anticipate that we would find any benefit from a Nintendo Switch controller because a Nintendo Switch controller has HD rumble, which is kind of like that haptic feedback, which I, okay, I can't make the direct comparison to the PS5 controller because I don't have a PS5 controller, but it's the kind of the same thing. Um, where it has independent rumble rumble motors so that you can feel things on different sides of the controller. And, um, you know, you wouldn't get any benefit from that. Um, Neil says, I wish Valhalla ran at 60 frames on Stadia so console fanboys would shut up. I've Listen, man, I've got a piece of advice for you, and it's a really important piece of advice. It doesn't matter what they say. Just ignore them. Their opinions don't matter. The only opinion that matters when you're playing a game is your opinion. It doesn't matter if the game got a 40 on Metacritic. It doesn't matter if people are like, oh my God, the frames are so low or whatever. It just, if you're having fun with the game, then you're winning. That's like the whole theme of 143 Pixels, which is one of my other shows. The resolution doesn't matter. All of that other crap doesn't matter. It's you and a game, and that's all that matters. Uh, Jerome, you've been playing a lot of SteamWorld Heist. That game's really good. It's really good. Ha does it play i haven't tried it because i only played it on switch does it play well with like a mouse like can you click on a character and, and click to tell them where to go not that using a controller is a bad interface it's just i wonder if that would be a better interface i haven't tried it on stadia i've only played it on uh on nintendo switch Consigno, who's getting Pac-Man when it comes out? This guy right here. I mean, look at me. I got a Pac-Man sign right there. I've got a Pac-Man 
device right here. Um, I don't think that I can bring it where you guys can see it. I've got a little Pac-Man arcade cabinet. Right here. It works. Like you can play Pac-Man on it. I'm a big fan of Pac-Man. So, yeah, I'm getting Pac-Man. Which reminds me, I should upload my Pac-Man emote um, that we have on the Discord channel. I should upload that to uh, Stadia. Uh, to this... this um, Oh my god, English sometimes. Words, brain. Let me see if I can do it right now. Memberships. And then we'll do badges and emotes. Emotes. Add another emoji. Select image. Ooh, now do I have them handy? I don't know if I do. So let me see where they would be. So run, jump, stomp, picks. Got to be emotes in here someplace. Emotes. What do we got? Do we have Pac-Man in here? I don't think I have Pac-Man in here. Maybe if I go to this one. Emotes. Nope, I don't have it. I'm going to have to go and find it. I can't do it right now, though. Yeah, I don't like Pac-Man. Yeah, arguing with... And, and by the way, you're being a little reductive when you call them console fanboys. Just... Don't be the, the, the same person that, that throws the, the, you know, lobs the insults the same way that they're doing to anybody else. It, just ignore them. That's the best way to get rid of um, someone is to just ignore them. And there's too many people out there that are too closed-minded to try it out. What day does that game come out anyway? The Pac-Man game. Pac-Man... Um, what is it? Tunnel... Battle? There we go. Pac-Man Tunnel Battle. When is that game coming out? Mega Tunnel Battle. Not not just Tunnel Battle. Mega Tunnel Battle. Let me fix this real quick. Fix Edge. There we go. All right. What day is this coming out? Go head to head, blah, blah, blah. Learn more about the game. Oh, okay. So it takes me to Stadia. November 17th. So three days. Awesome. I'm excited. I love this game. It's so good. Very, very excited for that game. It's going to be an absolute blast. And Sinos is not feeding trolls as hard. Yeah, I mean, as much as I preach about it, I when um, that that one guy came in earlier and was like, Stadia still exists, her, her, her. Um, like, I told him to go away, and I should have just ignored him. Uh, Regor says, people are receiving mails from St uh, Stadia about Outcasters saying, claim for free, I think it's coming soon. I hope so. That game looks super fun. They just they just showed off um, they just showed off um, team battle in that. 
that's gonna be so fun with a team you get on voice chat and you're like all right guys uh you know oh no the the the, the enemy is over here let's uh curve the shots around that way or whatever um pilks uk they should release it on the 19th they should release it when it's done and not a moment sooner Come in. I'm back. Uh, Richard says, I love Stadia. I just don't have the Chromecast in the controller. What, what games have you been playing on it, Rich? Richard, sorry. John75 says, hey, Bill, I forgot to say I like your cut G. I don't know what that means, man. You like my haircut? I assume that's what you mean. I, I think I might grow it back out. I haven't decided. I was moving my camera around, and, um, like, I opened up an old video to see where was my camera before, and then when I... Looked, I was like, oh, I kind of like how I looked with hair. So I might grow it back. Richard, you've been playing Borderlands 3 on your iPad Pro. Which um, which character did you go with, Richard? Because that game's awesome. I finished it, and I never finished games. Uh, Dave says, did you see the reflections in the Twitter post today? I don't know what ray tracing is, but I always hear them mention reflections as a thing. So... Ray tracing is uh, bas basically the the computer treats actual treats like photons of light like real things and does some math based on what is the object made out of and then how does how does the light bounce off of that object in order to look the most real so you can have things here, let me hit show uh so you can have things look a lot more realistic based on the material with ray tracing and everybody always does the same thing and it drives me crazy they pause a game like they freeze frame it and then they show side by side with ray tracing and without ray tracing and of course with ray tracing looks better it does look better. And I am not here to say that it doesn't look better. But when the game is not paused, when you're actually playing the game and you're not looking at it side by side with another game or with, with the game with ray tracing on, all that nonsense melts away and you just forget and you play the game. So as cool as ray tracing is, and it's cool, it is not the end all be all of video games. And too many people focus on that. Same thing with 60 versus 30 frames per second. Is it better with 60? Yes, it is better with 60. Are some, came, some games actually a detriment at 30 frames per second? Yes, but I've played shooters at 30 frames per second a billion times and I was fine. Am I, am, I, am I better off if I'm at 60? Of course, but I'm also fine at 30. What's more important is that you have a stable frame rate. What I can't stand is when uh, developers give me an unlocked frame rate. So like it hits like 50 or, or, or it, it hits 50 most of the time, but it keeps dropping down and up and down and up. That's a bad experience. I'd much, much rather have locked 30 than variable with 60 as what I usually have because that's a bad experience. And then the same thing with resolution. When you look at the resolution side by side, it is obvious this is 4K, this is 1080p. When you're playing the game, can you tell the difference? You usually can. But there has been many times where I've been streaming a game right here on this channel and somebody comes in and they're like, 
is this 4K? And my argument is, if they're asking that question, then they can't tell. And if you can't tell, if you have to ask, then who cares? So then they go to Digital Foundry and Digital Foundry, and I'm, this is not shaded Digital Foundry even a little bit, but they go to Digital Foundry and Digital Foundry pauses the game and does all of the analysis and they spend so much work to find out that the game is actually 1800p instead of 4k and everybody's like oh well what a pile of crap and i don't understand that mentality because if you literally have to do all of that work to figure out what resolution the game is playing at then you're missing the point of the game that's that's how i feel about it though Richard says, jumping back on the Xbox reminds me just now how nice console gaming is. Stadia as a platform is something that just makes sense. Jump in and play. Yeah. Core wants to know, best zombie for survival game. I have no idea. I've never, I don't think I've played a, um, Left 4 Dead. Uh, Left 4 Dead 2. Um, Gervinder, if, if, if people are clapping back at you with that kind of hate, just block them. John 75. Thank you very much. Welcome to supporters. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you for the support. Now, some of you might not know, what is this little rainbow bar going down at the bottom? Well, if you look right over here, where is it? Right here. You can see that number one. We want to try and keep that on the screen for as long as we can. So as long as somebody joins before that bar goes away, then that this would become a two, and that would be awesome for us. Uh, Neil Carter, have they given a date for the release of Stadia on the new Chromecast? They said early next year, I believe. Oh, by the way, um, we got the new Chromecast. Uh, it was 50 bucks, and I figured, what the hell? Why not? Uh, so I picked it up. I set it up on Thursday evening, I think. And we've been using it, and it's great. It's really, really good. Very, very happy with it. Uh, John75, what is my favorite Stadia game so far? Probably Doom uh, Eternal. That game is absolutely fantastic. I had so much fun playing that. Uh, I need to finish the DLC. I'm still very early on the DLC, but I had so much fun playing that game. It's, it's really good. Richard says, in a world with Xbox, PS5, Stadia, Luna, Switch, and PCs, the winners are us gamers with so many ways to play our favorite games. And I, Richard, I completely agree with that. Um, the, the advantage of the cloud systems is you don't have to buy a box to play it. That's why I'm, that's why I, when I saw it, I was like, okay, I don't have to spend $500 in order to play the latest games. Very cool. That is compelling. RJC, it'd be nice if Stadia would drive the fact that when you buy a title, you can play it without subscription. Yeah, RJC, I agree with you. I think that they made mistakes at the beginning where they were really trying to focus on 4k and they were like look at look we can get these resolutions that you can only get by spending a bunch of money which is very compelling but a lot of the games don't do that and it's not because stadia can't support it it's because the devs are porting those games and it's a lot of work to get those games optimized for a new platform and devs just they're not necessarily willing to do all that especially for a game 
that they've already finished production on and they've moved on to something else and now they're they have to take some of their team and say all right you know that game that we finished with like two years ago we need you to bring that over to stadia so that we can sell more copies of it um but we need you to make it as fast as you possibly can so that we can get you back on these new games that's the thing that people don't understand every game on stadia right now is a port in two years in three years that will no longer be the case and when a game comes out it will be not only day and date with stadia and the other platforms but they will probably have platform parity across all of them so if it runs at 4k 60 on this one it'll run at 4k 60 on this one it'll run at 4k 60 on stadia if it runs at 1800p 60 on this one it'll do the same thing on those two that's generally how it tends to work but people don't tend to understand that taking people off of your current project and having them work on an older game in order to port it to a new platform that's not going to be where people put most of their resources and so when you're early in the development or not the development when you're early in the life cycle of a brand new platform you're going to get old games that are ported to the system and they're not going to usually be the best optimized games but as that platform ages out or ages in things are going to get better and better the problem traditionally is that that takes so long that eventually developers are like okay well now we have to get ready for the next piece of hardware right you don't have to do that with stadia because they're not going to take stadia and say all right everybody has to now buy stadia 2 you don't have to do that so it's like it's just going to get better and better and better every single time well um American, let's be fair it's not necessarily five years um like i when did the ps when did the ps4 come out yeah ps4 came out 2013. so that's been seven years no november 24th 2017 yeah seven years Uh, Mike Gibson, am I, am I getting a new console? I don't know. I don't know. Um, first off, they're impossible to find. I did, and I didn't pre-order one. So, not for a while. <laughs> they are absolutely impossible to find. Unless you go to a scalper. And I don't want to go to a scalper. Um, Emperkin says, I recently canceled my Xbox Game Pass subscription and fully invested my money in Stadia. It's been amazing so far. Cool. If Final Fantasy X came to Stadia, I will buy a Chromecast. I mean, that's fair, Richard. I Look. Uh, here, I'll use the one that you can actually get a hold of. This, Richard, is my favorite controller. The Stadia controller is fantastic. It is my favorite controller. You should buy one, Richard. Ooh. Ooh. How you feeling, by the way, pal? How's the wife feeling, too? Uh, Pilks UK. I love my Wasabi controller. I want a Wasabi controller. I do. I don't need one. I have zero need for one. We have three Stadia controllers in my house now, so I don't need a Wasabi controller. I just want one for no good reason. But Final Fantasy X is not on there yet. Well, that's fair. But if you've been playing a bunch of uh, if you've been playing a bunch of Stadia, you want to play with this controller because this controller gives you the best experience to play with Stadia.
<laughs> Gervinder, the transparent Stadia dev controller looks so good. It does look really good. However, I'll say this. I only want it because it's rare, not because I actually like the look of it. I very much prefer the Wasabi controller and uh, this controller, the Founders Edition. Michael Mooney, thank you very much for the... Uh, where's the dinosaur? That's where the other stuff was showing up. Well, anyway, once Game Bus is ready... Oh, there's the dinosaur. Uh, thank you very much for the super chat, Michael. Uh, once Game Bus is ready, games could require a server rack worth of Stadia hardware to run up to 1,000 players. I don't know what Game Bus is. Oh, I didn't know that route. I didn't know that they didn't actually work. Did you guys see the glow in the the uh, the glow in the dark hoodie that they um, sent to Lamar Wilson? That thing was really cool looking. Uh, but Michael, can you expand on the game bus thing? I'm not, I, I'm unfamiliar with that. Mike Gibson, any predictions, announcements for Stadia's birthday hype train? I don't, I don't, I don't, I think they're going to let it come and go. And I think that they should, I think that they should go, uh, like on Monday, I think they should make an announcement. Hey everybody, um, we just announced uh, messaging and we just did um, family, whatever, family sharing. We don't have any planned announcements for um, for the one year anniversary. Unless they do. Like, I don't know. Maybe some sales? Sales would be good. But it, like we talked about it extensively at the beginning. If you want to rewind, you can go check that out. Oh, that's what I didn't realize it was called Game Bus. Thank you for the clarification, Lewis. Thank you very much. I didn't know that was what that's what it was called. Taco Bell. Hopefully Stadia will have another year-long promo now that Destiny is done. It should be like Valhalla for a year for a free claim. You know, I think it would be better if it's a multiplayer game. Yeah, I forgot it was called Game Bus. I've seen that rumor... Uh, earlier today, somebody told me about the rumor there at Gervinder. Um, we'll see if it happens. I do hope so. I ordered a new, I ordered a new mic stand, and uh, we'll see when it gets here. But I'm, I'm trying, I'm thinking of getting rid of my boom arm and just having like a desktop stand. Uh, Jacob Dickens, is Serious Sam worth the price? I don't know, man. I mean, it's it's cool. It's fun. It's like Doom, but stupid. Um, Not in a bad way. It's just really... It's kind of lame, but also fun at the same time. But there's much better games on Stadia. Or there's much better games in general. Lewis Johnson, I wish I think I wish Google would talk more about the back end tech to us gamers. That stuff fascinates me. I think people are more interested in it than Google thinks. I think that's a mistake, actually. I think it's a bad idea for them to talk about all that stuff. I think they should just focus on the games and say, 
Hey, here's Cyberpunk 2077. Look how pretty it looks. You can buy it and play it on your Chromebook or on your TV or on your computer or on your MacBook, and you don't have to buy anything else. That is compelling enough. I think when Google gets into the weeds about numbers and stuff, that's when the, uh, you know, the, the, the numbers nerds come out and then they start picking everything apart. Well, you know, this is actually 1800p, not 4K. And if you're a numbers nerd, I'm not really making fun of you. <laughs> Mike Gibson. Yeah, did you see that video where I uh, broke the game? <laughs> that was pretty early on, too. Dave, I agree with you 100% about Outcasters being a really good game for crowd play. I hope it has crowd play. I don't think that that's... I don't think many people will care about that nearly as much as just, you know, this game being, you know, game X being fun. I do think it's important. I don't think it's super important for announcement wise. Uh, Valerio, has anyone played Final Fantasy 15 on Stadia? If so, is it good? Thanks in advance. Um, so I have uh, Final Fantasy 15 on Stadia. I've only played it a little bit because I had already played it on other platforms. I want and I wanted to just try it out. And I have not played it since like Stadia launched like a year ago or whenever like I got it shortly after it came out. And at the time it was kind of a bad port. The HDR looked real bad. It was capped at I think it was capped at like 1080p, which I don't care about, but a lot of people do. Um, it just wasn't a very good port. Now, I have seen like recently on Reddit people talking about how the game has improved. I have not jumped back into it to find out if it has improved or not. Um, so maybe, maybe it's better. But, um, you know, if you have... If you already have that game someplace else, don't buy it again. Hey, Cannoli, what's up, man? <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, no problem, Valerio. The Dutch guy. Have the issues with Watch Dogs Legion been fixed? Those issues were the reason I didn't buy it yet. I don't know what the issues were. If you mean that it runs at 30 frames per second, then I doubt it. But it's possible. I mean, when Elder Scrolls Online came out, it ran at 1080p. And then they patched it and now it runs at 4K. Uh, GRS UK, what game are you hoping for if Stadia were to give away one for the first birthday? Oh, that's a great question. Um, like, just give away a game? Just any game at all? Okay. Let's, let's look at Stadia real quick and see what are the options. So we'll go to the store. And we'll look at all games. Pro deals, all games. Here we go. So, number one, I think it should be a, a multiplayer game because then a lot of people will be playing it together. Or a game that, that has good multiplayer. So, a game that you can just give away to everybody.
Well, I don't know. It also needs to ha be a game that has, like, wide appeal. Oh, you know what? I saw this. And I saw somebody tweet out that um, this game does not um, support. Family sharing. And I'm just looking here to see if it says anything about family sharing on here. It doesn't say. All right, let's, let's keep going. So just a free, just a free, you know what? Maybe, no, a single player game would be better. A single player game would be better. If I were Square Enix, I would request that uh, we give away Mar Marvel's Avengers on Stadia because like they're, they didn't sell very many copies and uh, people would be playing it and then they might like spend money on like the stupid cosmetics and stuff. Pac-Man. Pac-Man would be good. Um, but that's not... That, I, I think a single-player game would really show it off. Or Division 2. Because that has cross platform multiplayer. And it showed. Oh, yeah. Division 2 can be played by yourself, can be played with other people. Also has cross platform multiplayer. Also has Stream Connect in it. So that if you do match up with another Stadia player, you see that little window and you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think Division 2 Standard Edition, um, I think that that would be a really good game to give away. That's that's what I think. What do you guys think? What, do you, what game do you guys think that Stadia should just give away? Um, RJC, Bill, you should schedule a Stadia birthday webcast and maybe Stadia X... We'll give you a handful of codes to give away. I am, I am doing, uh, I'm planning on doing um, an open mic on that day. And then at the end of the open mic, I'm going to be on the Stadia Source podcast. WDL on Stadia. Watch Dogs Legion. Okay. Uh, never crashed on me. Making it one of the more stable ports by comparison. I've only had a game crash on Stadia like, I don't know, three times? I think another thing that they could do is rather than just give away a game, just keep doing those demos. Do a demo every single week. Every single week on, say, Wednesday, give out a demo for a week. Everybody's jumping in, playing that game together, making friends with other people who are playing that game. That's a really good way to play. Watch Dogs Legion feels so empty. Isn't it? Is that a multiplayer game? I thought it was just a single player game. I didn't even know you could play that multiplayer. What, if any, games are great on Stadia for couch co-op? Well, I, I want to know what you guys think about this. So, um, you know, answer in chat 
or in chat, I guess would be over there. Chat's over there. Uh, so answer in chat, which games do you think are best for couch co-op? I would say Monopoly. Is, well, I mean, that's not co-op. That's, that's like against the other players. Monopoly is pretty good. Um, Uno is not. I suppose you could play against the computer, but it's not, it's not particularly uh, enticing. Um, Cake Bash, not co-op, but definitely a couch play kind of game. Um, there's that game by Coat Sync where you're like moving stuff, moving out. That might be the name of the game. I'm not sure. Uh, that one's a co-op game. It's okay. Uh, there's a lot of fun to be had with it, but it's also kind of frustrating because of the, the physics. Uh, Mind Plague, Division 2 for co-op, but he's he's looking for um, couch co-op, where you're both playing on the same screen. Get Packed, yeah, not, not Moving Out. Moving Out is the one that was on the Switch, uh, which I think is a superior game, but um, doesn't have any online play, so you can't play with anybody uh, like online. Uh, Richard says, is Overcooked on Stadia? No. No, Overcooked is not on Stadia. Risk of Rain 2 has, um, has split screen? I didn't, I did not know that. I did not know that. Kaylin, hey, Bill, how's it going? I just found out today that if you something Wi-Fi router speed from, oh, switch the Wi-Fi router speed from 2.4 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz, it works smoothly as butter on all Stadia games. That depends on a couple things. 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi um, has a slower speed, but a better reach through walls and stuff. 5 gigahertz has higher possible speeds, but like having a problem where there's like walls and stuff like that in the way really gets in the way. Um, I personally, I have Google Wi-Fi and I swear by it. It is absolutely amazing. Not only for how easy it is to set up, but also for the fact that with Google Wi-Fi, you can completely control everything in your house from your phone very, very easily. So like we have certain schedules so that during the day, like the, the kids um, can't like watch TV or stuff like that until they're finished with their schoolwork. And then they mess, they send me a message and I can unlock it from my phone. Um, you know, at bedtime, the Wi-Fi that the kids use shuts off. So they, they can't use the Wi-Fi at night when they sh they're supposed to be sleeping. Like all that stuff makes makes it so much easier to manage. So like when my daughter uh, was younger, um, we wouldn't let her have a computer in her room because we were afraid that she'd look at the computer at night when she's supposed to be sleeping. So we was like, no, you can't have a computer in your room. So we had one of our, we had her, her computer was basically in the kitchen, taking up a whole bunch of room. That's not a, uh, a worry that we have because now we have Google Wi-Fi. The, the internet just doesn't work for the kids at night, which is awesome. There is, there is an overcooked style mode in Krata. It's not as fun though. Sundered has couch co-op. I did not know that. I'm going to have to try that out. Uh, see if my wife wants to help me with that. I am going to talk about my wife on tomorrow's show a little bit. She does not like the UI on the phone for Stadia. <laughs> oh, no problem, Kaylin. I'm, I'm glad that I was, it was a useful, useful answer.
I'm interested in uh, trying out Sundered Eldritch Edition um, with co-op. That's very interesting. Crafty, am I looking forward to Outcasters? I am looking forward to Outcasters. That game looks really good. It looks really fun. I am looking forward to it. Um, it looks super unique, and I like that a lot. And I like that they have both solo play and team play. Oh, yeah, 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 Gervinder. Uh, I personally don't like Human Fall Flat because I don't like the physics of it. I don't like games that have physics like that, but a lot of people um, a lot of people love that game. And so I think that, uh, that Human Fall Flat is a good shout for people who are looking for a couch co-op game. Am I excited for Cyberpunk 2077 on Stadia? I don't know. We'll see. Um, I never played The Witcher. Well, okay, that's not true. I have The Witcher 3 on PC. I bought it when it was like super, super cheap once. I also got a review copy of it for Nintendo Switch because I have a Nintendo podcast as well. And I played both games a little bit, not very much. And he here's the reason. The reason is, is because every time anybody ever talks about The Witcher 3, they always say how huge the game is. And they say that like it's a good thing. And, you know, for, for most people, that is a good thing. To me, it's intimidating. And I say, I don't have time for to play a huge game, a multi-hundred hour game. So I'm going to go ahead and pass. I'm not going to play it. Now... Cyberpunk 2077, same developers, CD Projekt Red. Um, by all accounts, it's going to be an absolutely massive, massive, massive game. And I don't know if I have the time. Like, I'm going to do what I always end up doing is I'll get 10 hours into it and then I'll have to get distracted by something else because the next thing came out. Uh, RJC, does Stadia over your Google Wi-Fi ever stutter like frequent pauses? No. Um, I get some artifacting. Like in this room, it's uh, hooked up to um, Ethernet. In my bedroom across the hall, it's hooked up via Wi-Fi. And if I'm playing a game in there, I might get some a little bit of extra artifacting. But for the most part, it's rock solid. Well, Vicric says, <laughs> Vicric, you, you know, you said Cyberpunk is shorter than The Witcher, but The Witcher is like 300 hours. So that's not saying much. I, I want more games to come out and be, what is this? Why is that blurry right there? You guys see that as blurry at the bottom of my screen. I bet you. That was the top of my monitor. <laughs> You guys were seeing the very top of my monitors right here. Um, I think more. I think so. more games need to be shorter. Uh, Tabosa, do you think Stadia's server hardware update will bring any ray tra will bring ray tracing? Yeah, eventually. Gervinder says, yeah, it can be frustrating whom it fall flat. However, definitely a fun couch co-op game. And, and you know what? The human fall flat, the physics that I don't like, it's the same physics that are in Ember, which is a fantastic game. I just don't like the physics, so I don't play it. Vickrick says, the main story in Witcher is about 50 hours, but... I play games much slower than most people. Douglas, new to Stadia, but love it so far. Well, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. We're happy to have you. By the way, if you guys didn't know, we have a Discord, which you can join, and you can keep this, these conversations going 
even when we're not live by joining the Discord. There's a link in the description down below. I need to make an animation for Discord, kind of like I have the subscribe animation. I need a Discord animation that shows up. Oh yeah, Spitlings is a is a uh, a a great couch co op game. Douglas, what um what games have you played on Stadia so far? They don't need new hardware for Vulcan ray tracing as they can use bath graphics chips. I think he means both graphics chips on Stadia's GPU. I mean, we'll see. I've I've had a developer tell me that they are they have been working on a game that has ray tracing on Stadia. That game has yet to come out yet. So, I don't know if they're pulling my leg or not, but uh, uh, only time will tell. You've been playing Destiny 2 and Sniper 4 right now. Nice. <clears throat> Which one's your favorite? American People seem disappointed by 30 frames per second in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. People are always disappointed about something. Yeah, a search button would be nice. It's so weird that Google is a search company and they don't have a search button on Stadia. Like, that's just so weird. It's such a weird thing. Destiny because you like Bungie. All right, cool. I have a lot of hours in Destiny. That game was really, really fun. PS5 games. I heard the price of games are going up. Would Stadia increase the price as well? Sony does not set the price of games on their platform. Um, the publishers of those games set the price of those games. So if the company is deciding I'm going to sell this game on PS5, I think we might be back. Yeah, there we go. We're back. Okay. OBS crashed for a minute there, but I was able to get it back online. Um, so, you know, if the publishers set the price at $70, then guess what? That's going to be $70 on PlayStation. It's going to be $70 on Xbox, and it's going to be $70 on Stadia. And if it comes to Nintendo Switch, it's going to be $70 on Nintendo Switch. It'll be cheaper on PC because PC games just tend to be cheaper. I don't, I don't know what THPS is. What's THPS? Thips. Thips? What is THPS? Oh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. If you are a fan of Tony Hawk Pro Skater, I recently did an interview with my favorite music, musical um, music streamer on Twitch, um, Tyson from the Fantastic Plastics. They have a an awesome, 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 awesome... Um, Twitch stream where they play their own music and sometimes like Devo music and, and stuff from the 80s and covers and stuff like that. Uh, but he was on um, just this week and we talked about um, Tony Hawk Pro Skater as the game that he wanted to talk about. GRS says you listened to it the other day, man. Great interview. Thank you. Yeah, if you go to this website.
you guys click on that website, it will take you right here and you can subscribe right now. All right. I've interviewed people like Tyson from the Fantastic Plastics, uh, TV's Travis, Chris Enns, Jeff Kanata, uh, Seth Scott, Diddy Does Games, Pierce Schneider, the one of the founders of IGN, Brian Ibbett, uh, Tony P. Henderson from The Avengers, sort of, uh, Andre Seegers, who uh, is a founder of Game Explain, uh, a whole bunch of people. Uh, you should definitely check out this podcast because there's a lot of re- David Brevik, the creator of Diablo. I talked to him about uh, EverQuest. You guys should definitely listen. Oh, Richard's right there. That's that's Richard. That chap Zap. Uh, you guys should absolutely check out 143 Pixels. You're going to like it. Guaranteed. What is that link to? It's to one of my other podcasts. Just click it. Just click it. The interview with David Brevik was your favorite? Nice. Richard says, Did you know that the original Tony Hawk's Pro Skater could be put into a CD player and play the... Get out of town for real? That's cool. That's really cool. I didn't know. I did not know that. By the way, everybody, we've got about another half hour and then I'm going to call the stream. So if you got qu- burning questions that you want us to discuss, start sending them. Yeah, I've got one episode of season five recorded. And season four is over, so I have my work cut out for me. It's going to be a little bit before season five comes out. See you later, GRS. Thanks for stopping by. Brandon, thanks for the sub, man. I appreciate it. Thought I was already subscribed to you, but I guess I wasn't, so I just did. You know... That happens to me a lot. Like, I watch a certain channel a million times or whatever, and then I'll be like, I I go into my subscription feed. I'm like, oh, I can't find them. I'm not subscribed to them. That's weird. Uh, Warren says, new to Stadia. Has anyone played Borderlands 3? It's on sale, and I can get it for just 10 bucks. Uh, Borderlands 3 is fantastic on Stadia. It's really, really fun. See you later, Douglas. Uh, Variato, can you repeat what your expectations are for the Stadia anniversary? I've talked about it twice. Just rewind back to the beginning of the show, and um, I'm sure that you'll hear it then. I have no expectations, but you know, I talked about what I what I what I would do if I were in charge. I find that when people have expectations, then the, then the expectations can be dashed. Can you share some of the challenges you face when managing this show? Sure. Um, well, it depends on what you mean. If you mean like technical challenges, then, you know, fighting with my ISP to make sure that I have a good upload speed. Um, when I, when I interviewed, uh, Gabe, uh, Gabe Krahulik, Mike Krahulik from Penny Arcade, and we talked about, you know, his experience with Stadia. I was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to record like some 4K footage and I'm going to edit it all together uh, with the interview because we didn't do a video interview. And I did that. But what I had, I, what I had forgotten is that I had, 
I had one of the settings was wrong in OBS when I recorded my footage. And I didn't realize it until after I had edited all of the footage together and rendered the video, which if you've never edited and rendered 4K footage, it takes a stupid amount of time. Like it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. And not worth it 90% of the time. And uh, then I uploaded it. And I was like, oh, you know what? Let me just watch it real. Ooh, it's a little choppy. And it's not choppy because the gameplay is choppy. It's choppy because I had my settings wrong when I recorded the footage. That was really frustrating. If you're talking about challenges like... I can't, I'm like dealing with trolls and stuff like that. My recommendation is have a good mod team and when uh, make sure that they understand your expectations. The you know the biggest challenge for managing this show is that people sometimes. And you know what? It's a vocal minority of people. They get their nose bent out of shape. Anytime we talk about something that is not just Stadia. And I've always been... I've always been excited about more than one thing. I'm like, oh man, this thing is really cool. You know? And... Like, they'll get mad if we talk about xbox or playstation or whatever i just don't understand that because just because we talk about that stuff doesn't mean that that we're going to get rid of the stadia cast sunday show it just means that we like talking about more than just stadia video games we like talking about all video games i like talking about nintendo switch stuff i like talking about playstation pc xbox i like talking about everything and there's a vocal minority of people who consume our content they 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 just don't want to hear anything good about anything that's not stadia and i find that to be kind of bananas Uh, Dan Darcy says, hey, Bill, absolutely love the show and content Stadia Cast puts out. Looking forward to tomorrow's show. Keep up the great work. Greetings from Ireland. Stay safe. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Yeah, like I would love like here's what I would do. If it were not for that super vocal minority, what I would probably do is I would probably do like a daily gaming news show where I don't know maybe well maybe not daily maybe I don't know I would do a, a, a news show where I, we would just do an open mic like this and people would ask questions and then I would take those questions turn that into a video and have that be here but then on Sundays and sometimes that would be Stadia content sometimes that would be Nintendo or PlayStation or Xbox or PC or Luna or whatever but then Stadia cast the Sunday show would be just Stadia well Tabosa you're not wrong like there's a lot of people out there that think that if you like this thing then you have to hate this thing that's tribalism. And that's why everybody gets everybody gets mad at the console. I'm going to use the words that other people use. The console fanboys. They get mad at them for, you know, hating on Stadia. But then they do the same thing. They turn right around and they're like, Oh, Xbox has to download stuff. And I'm like, really? That's who you want to be? You don't want to be better than that? Pablo, I, I hope that there's deals for Stadia's birthday. You know what? I'm not going to buy anything between now and then, just in case. <laughs> My lad just waved at you and said, he's the guy that gave us goldfish. That's right. Hey, little man, how's it going? 
Uh, Michael says, I see Stadia cast as a streaming service show with a focus on Stadia, but talking about other platforms adds to the show. I don't see it that way. I see it as a stuff that Bill and Lloyd are interested in show. That's what I see it as. What am I interested in talking about? I think that that is more compelling than forcing myself to only look at this little tiny segment of the market when we could talk about everything. Richard says, hey, Bill, you should tell the folks uh, here about the time I sent you Marmite. Hey, Richard, <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm just kidding, buddy. Uh, so, yeah, Richard and I used to do a show together. And uh, one of the things that we would do, because he lives in England and I live here in the States, is we would find... Um, foods that are only available in our countries and we would mail them well okay we uh, meaning our wives would do all of this work because we're just idiots and they're awesome and uh our wives would find all of this food box it all up mail it across uh across the ocean we called it the cross atlantic snack exchange or case for short and then we would do a twitch stream where we just open up the food and eat like taste all of the stuff and he sent Marmite and it was really, really gross. And uh, I'll never forgive him for that. Christopher Torres says, bless you. Christopher Torres didn't say that. Uh, Christopher Torres says, hey, Bill, great show. I know it's a long shot, but who knows? Ubisoft plus predictions, Stadia birthday, December 1st. Your thoughts? Well, Stadia's birthday... Oh, when do I think it's coming? I don't know. Sometime before the end of the year. Uh, MK Gaming. Are you thinking about rebranding StadiaCast? I mean, that didn't really occur to me to rebrand StadiaCast. But you know, we were just talking about the fact that, that some people get their nose bent out of shape when whenever we talk about things that are not Stadia. But Lloyd and I have always been people who are interested in a lot of different aspects of the gaming industry. And so we, we just like talking about the gaming industry as a whole. And obviously we're not listening to the haters because Lloyd just did a, a stream about Xbox. And it went fine. He did that stream because he wanted to. Dutch guy says, Marmite is great. I didn't read the rest of that sandwich because the beginning of that sandwich was so terrible. John Ryan says Stadia has good deals. For example, when I joined not that long ago, I got the crew two for $2 and 65 cents and far cry five ultimate for 18 bucks. That's, that is a good deal. Those are good deals. Uh, Verado. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, Richard, I'm hooked on that T man. I'm hooked on that T. Um, we've been drinking black English tea nonstop since. So thank you. I put a little bit of sweetener in there though. I can't drink it without the sweetener. See you later, Verado. Thanks for stopping in, man. You know what, Daniel Brennan, you're you're not wrong, dude. So many really good deals have come to I mean, look, not everybody who uses Stadia has YouTube premium. But I do. And now I got a free a, a free premiere edition. 
That's fantastic. What a friggin' deal. That is absolutely bonkers that, that this is what they did. They just gave this out. This is ex like, this controller is worth 70 bucks and it came with a Chromecast, which unfortunately I really don't need. But, you know, we've got the the Founders Pack. The Founders Pack came with three, three free months of Stadia Pro. And then they extended that to, I think, five months of Stadia Pro or something like that. And then after that, um, we, we got multiple games every single month. The, the fewest number of games that we got in a month was two, and like there have been multiple months with six games. It's just been a really good deal. And then the sales. Like, every time a game is on sale, it's it's also on even better sale for Stadia Pro. I wish... This is my biggest wish for Stadia, is that they would just get rid of the requirement of Pro for 4K. Because honestly... I don't think that that sells it. And if you are saying, oh, you want 4K, then you got to get Pro, then every single game should be 4K. Not because I think 4K is that much better than whatever, but if you're saying, oh, Pro gets you 4K, then all of the games should be 4K. But instead, just say, just move that out of Stadia Pro, and Stadia Pro should just be three games each month and uh, or included games each month and really good sales. I can't believe how, you know, I'm replying to Justin Dickerson here. I can't believe how fast the premiere edition showed up. I think it was like two days and it was here. I don't even think they sent me tracking information. It just like there was a package on the front steps and I was like what's that uh, but uh, you know t back to what MK gaming was asking about before if we ever did rebrand stadia cast stadia cast would still be the show on Sunday like we would still be talking about stadia every Sunday as the podcast because that's really what this is Yeah, I agree with you. 5.1 should not be locked behind Pro. Pro should just be about deals and free games. That's my opinion anyway. Um, Justin Dickerson, I literally expected at least a week or more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had, yeah, I expected it to be, like, that was faster than Amazon. And I have Amazon Prime, that was faster than the things that, like, I had ordered, I ordered a new microphone, which I ended up sending back because it did not work the way I wanted it to, and it sounded real bad. Uh, I ordered a new microphone, and... Like, it took a week to get here. I have Amazon Prime. It took a week to get here. After I ordered the microphone, I signed up for the Stadia Premiere bundle through YouTube Premium. And the this controller got here the day before my microphone. Michael Mooney, I don't think that's true because all of the games... Are rendered in the same the same Stadia blades, right now. So that's not actually like those games are like they they're just saying oh we're gonna and guess what if I'm paying for Stadia Pro and I don't like what's where's my incentive to pay for Stadia Pro if I have a 1080p TV, which is most people, most people don't have 4K.
It, it, you know what? MK Gaming says, I, I love that the new Premiere and all the Google customers, it's a great way to infuse the platform with new players and increase the player base. Yes. I think that what they should have done, and this is what I would have done if I had been in charge, I would have said, this is free for anybody who's currently a subscriber to YouTube Premium. And if you sign up for YouTube Premium before, say, this day, we will also send you a free whatever. Because that would have gotten a lot of people onto YouTube Premium. And once you have been on YouTube Premium and you experience never seeing an ad anywhere on YouTube, you don't want to go anywhere else. You don't ever want to give up YouTube Premium. We went, we, my, my wife and I picked up YouTube Premium when uh, Cobra Kai's first season came out because I wanted to watch Cobra Kai. Like I loved Karate Kid when I was a kid. And um, uh, so we picked that up when, when Cobra Kai first came out. And I, we've never shut it off since because I can't, I cannot imagine going back to watching YouTube with ads. Uh, Justin Dickerson, do you think we'll see more gameplay of Assassin's Creed on the channel? Uh, well, Lloyd's the one who's been doing that. So if you want um, more of that, then make sure that you uh, let him know. I'm I'm not streaming that game because I'm bad at streaming that kind of game. I, I just can't focus. I very much prefer streaming like this where it's just me talking to you guys and we're having a conversation i like doing that more i think it's more fun whenever i try and play a game which is why i don't do it very often whenever i try and stream a game i can't pay attention to the game and chat at the same time And Lloyd doesn't really like doing open mics. He, he prefers to play the games. Um, so random, no. Lewis Johnson says, YouTube Premium is rather lovely and only an extra $2 per month or two pounds per month on top of my Google Play Music sub at the time. Now YouTube Music. Yeah, and we use YouTube Music all the time. It's great. Nathan Bain, by 2020, more than half of U.S. households are expected to have 4K-capable TVs. <clears throat> Much faster adoption rate than full HD 1080p. Uh, maybe. But, you know what? Even if they have uh, 4K-capable TVs, maybe they don't have bandwidth for 4K. Like... What is Stadia's bandwidth? Stadia's bandwidth requirements. Uh, let's take a look at this together. Now, keep in mind that eventually this is going to decrease. But right now, if you want to play 1080p, um, you need to have like uh, 20 megabits per second. And... 4K, you got to have 35. Mo even even people who have a 4K TV probably don't have this. So maybe it makes sense to get rid of the 4K from Stadia Pro, take it out of there, give it to everybody, and then just send them the signal that they, like, oh, okay, well, their, their internet can't handle 4K, so we're going to do 1080p for them. Um, and I think that you would have more customers and then they might sign up for Stadia Pro for the deals. That's just my opinion though. You know, you, you don't have to agree with me.
But I, I, I will say I've been having a blast on Stadia. Um, so many really great games, and I don't have to have crazy hardware, and I can play them in any room in my house. Like, if I wanted to, like right now, my son is downstairs playing Assassin's Creed. If I wanted to, I could say, hey, you're all done with that. I'm going to play it now. And now I could play it up here, or I could go across the hall into my bedroom and play it, or I could go down to the living room and play it. And he can play it in his bedroom on his computer. Like we can play it wherever we want and we don't have to have a bunch of hardware everywhere. Bernard Baker, Bill, I just found your open mic. I'm so happy to see this after all this yard work I had to do today. Bernard, I highly suggest that you rewind because we're ending in about 10 minutes. Uh, Justin Dickerson, what do you think they could replace 4K to draw the pro membership? I do, however, agree they should drop that. What, for If they want to entice people to pro, just the deals. The deals are awesome. Like, having been a pro member for the last year, I've received 52 games for my membership. And I've received really good discounts on the other games that I've purchased. No reason to be sad, Bernard. If you just rewind at the beginning, it'll be just like uh, you were here the whole time. Oh, you've been listening while doing yard work, Lord Vivek? Luckily, there's no yard work that I have to do. My uh, lawnmower is put away for the year. My snowblower is ready. This is the most ready that I have been for winter ever. I made sure that my snowblower worked before the snow fell. I got the battery out of my um, lawnmower and brought it down to the basement so that it would be nice and warm all winter. I feel like I'm a grown's up. Well, oh, thank you very much for listening, Bernard. I appreciate it, man. Lord Vivek says, freaking leaves. Um, we have evergreen um, trees on our property. So we have pine needles, but I just ignore those. I just ignore them. We have one tree on our property is, I think it's a red maple. And it's not actually on my property, it's on my neighbor's property. But when the when the leaves fall, the wind just blows them away anyway. Uh, one of YouTube Premium is using an app on your phone to listen to Bill. One of YouTube Premium, oh yes, one of the bonuses of using YouTube Premium is that you can, um, Shut off your phone and listen to YouTube in the background, which I use actually way more than I thought I would. I always thought, oh, I'm not going to listen to a YouTube video, but there's a lot of YouTube videos that I can just listen to. I don't need to watch. So yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of YouTube premium. I'll never go back. Daniel Brennan woke up with a sound of neighbors with two leaf blowers at 6.30 a.m. Here's my suggestion to you, Daniel. Go out there at like 3 a.m. with a leaf blower and clean it up. You know, clean it up for them. When they come out and they're like, what the hell are you doing? You say, well, I was just cleaning it for you so that you didn't have to because I was sleeping at 6.30 in the morning when you, when you did it. So now I'm doing it so you don't have to. And then I'll get to sleep. And they'll get the hint. It's very, very passive aggressive. <laughs> Stadia Universe, what do you think will happen on Stadia's anniversary event on November 19th? Rewind to the beginning. We'll talk about not my expectations, but uh, what I th what I would like to happen.
Bernard Baker, I think once Google offers an entire package of Stadia, YouTube Premium, YouTube Music Premium, uh, it might get me. Well, YouTube Premium comes with YouTube Music. So, like, that's included. If they threw in Stadia with that, wow, that would be a deal and a half. I don't know if you guys are aware or not, but you've been listening to YouTube music this whole time. Well, see now, Daniel, that's just rude. The other way, the other way is passive aggressive, which is better. <laughs> All right, guys, we've got like three minutes left and then I'm uh, shutting the stream down. So get your, your last few questions in if you've got them. Outcaster's release date. Well, you know, there's rumors that it's coming real soon. I hope so. I hope it comes soon. I want to play that game. Whoever's in charge of their um, social media account, they do good work. Bernard Baker, I'll ask my one question before you go in case you haven't talked about it. How have you got... How far have... It, how far have you gotten into Sekiro? I'm extremely tempted. I got to the horse boss. Um, so let me actually bring up Stadia. I can look at my profile and see how many hours that I've played it. I'm going to guess probably around 12 hours. But I'm not positive. All right, so see all. All right, here we go. Sekiro, I'm about 11 hours into the game. About 11 hours into the game. I'm about three hours into Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I'm 30 hours into Baldur's Gate 3. 15 hours in PGA Tour. Uh, f almost 40 hours in Orcs Must Die 3. 65 hours in Borderlands 3. 30 hours in Doom Eternal. 11 hours in Super Bomberman R. 5 hours in Risk of Rain 2. 120 hours in Elder Scrolls Online. And that's just on Stadia. Holy cannoli. Yeah, it's already over. We're 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 uh, wrapping up. Well, MKJ, just keep in mind, Google hasn't announced anything that's happening that day, so don't don't anticipate and then be disappointed based on your anticipation. All right. Uh, thank you to Jacob, John, and Michael for the super chats or memberships, whichever those are. You guys are really, really awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks to the uh, couple of hundred people that were here. You guys are awesome. I'm out of here. You guys have a great day. I hope that you will all stay rad. I'll see you guys tomorrow for StadiaCast. Bye, everybody.